Since the beginning of the sport, baseball pitchers have been judged primarily on their ability to prevent opponents from scoring runs. The stat used most commonly to capture this is a pitcher's earned run average or ERA. It's a simple but useful stat that tells us how many earned runs a pitcher gives up on average in 9 innings. As convenient as ERA is though, it tends to leave a lot to the imagination, offering nothing about how a given pitcher arrived at that ERA. A pitcher who allows 3 earned runs in each of 3 9 inning games has the exact same ERA as a pitcher who allows 1, 7, and 1 earned runs over 3 9 inning games. However, pitcher number 1 is far more consistent and is giving their team a fair chance to win on any given night. This brings up an interesting problem, which will be the focus of this video. I'm Jack of All Baseball, and this is Stat Heavy. Having a good idea of what your team's pitcher is going to provide on any given night is invaluable. A pitcher that flip-flops between getting shelled and posting 7 plus inning shutout ball can quickly become a big issue. If your bullpen is worn out and you desperately need your starter to pitch deep into a game, you're gambling by putting an inconsistent pitcher on the mound. Not to mention if you need a solid performance in a win or go home playoff game. The stat that's likely the most familiar to baseball fans that can show consistency would be quality starts. A pitcher earns a quality start when they pitch 6 plus innings and give up 3 or less earned runs. You might remember that Framber Valdez recently broke Jacob deGrom's record for consecutive quality starts this season. So we have quality starts, but does it fully capture the consistency of a pitcher? Only to a very small extent. I think we can create a stat that better evaluates pitcher consistency. When I think about the consistency of a pitcher, it has nothing to do with how good or bad their ERA is. A pitcher can be consistently bad by giving up 5 earned runs every night, inconsistently bad by switching back and forth between good and bad outings, and the same goes for pitchers with good ERAs. Rather, it has to do with how their ERA changes from game to game. These changes in ERA are going to be the foundation of our new stat. In saying that, I think that the best way to do this is by taking an average of those ERA changes throughout the season. But you can't just take the normal average because a pitcher's ERA will have bigger changes the closer we get to the start of the year. We're going to counteract this problem by giving more weight to games later in the season and less weight to games earlier in the season. The weight assigned will just be the outing number minus one divided by the total outings for that pitcher. For those of you that are a little more math savvy, here's what the pitching consistency equation would look like. In simple words though, it'll be a stat that tells you how much a pitcher's ERA is changing from game to game throughout a season. The lower the number, the more consistent a pitcher has been. So, now that we have our stat ready to go, let's see how some of this year's pitchers stack up. Will our stat pass the eye test? I'm going to test our new stat out on some Blue Jays pitchers, because that's the team I watch most, and I'll be able to judge whether I think it's working or not. To start, I'm going to find the consistencies for three different Jays pitchers and see how they compare to each other. The pitchers we'll look at are Alec Manoa, who I'd argue has been consistently good this season, Jose Barrios, who has been inconsistently bad this season, meaning he hasn't been good, but he's had great outings here and there, and Yusei Kikuchi, who has had a pretty consistently bad season this year. Let's see how they stack up. Here's Alec Manoa's ERA changes from game to game throughout 2022. From these, we get a consistency of 0.102. This really doesn't mean anything yet though, because we have nothing to compare it to. So let's do the same for Jose Barrios. Here's Jose Barrios's ERA changes throughout the year. They give a consistency of 0.525. That's worse than Manoa, which holds up nicely. But let's see where Kikuchi ends up. Ideally, he would be much closer to Manoa in consistency, since he's been consistently bad. Let's see. 
Here is Yusei Kikuchi's ERA changes throughout the year, giving a consistency of 0.187. The stat seems to hold up pretty nicely. It's shown exactly what I've seen as a Jays fan this year. If you're interested, here are the consistencies of some other pitchers throughout the league this year. Some standouts here on the inconsistent side are Nathan Eovaldi and Hunter Green. I'm not too surprised to see Green so high. I haven't watched him much myself, but from what I've heard, Reds fans have echoed what the stat shows here. It is his rookie season though, and his last six or so starts looked pretty strong. On the consistent side of things, we see Cole Irvin and Kevin Gossman. Gossman has been great this season, and has felt really reliable in a Jays rotation that wavered at times. Moving on, there's a lot of really consistent pitchers here. Shane Bieber has continued to dominate most times he takes the mound, and looking back at the year Gonsolin had, especially in the first half, seeing him with such a high consistency is no surprise. Here's one more set of pitchers we can glance at. Check out Max Freed with the only sub.1 consistency out of these pitchers. There's been a lot of great seasons here, but I want to highlight a couple of the veterans, with Max Scherzer and Justin Verlander still putting up ridiculous numbers. These guys just don't seem to age. Shout out to McClanahan and Alcantara on a couple of insane years as well. Finally, just for fun, here's a look at the consistency stat of pitchers from a few great seasons in the past 30 years. Check out 1999 Pedro Martinez. No surprise there. He has an argument for the greatest pitching season of all time that year. A more recently impressive season is 2018 Jacob deGrom though, with the best pitching consistency out of any of the seasons shown here. After looking through all of these pitchers, it seems like a consistency under 0.2 is very good and above 0.4 is not so good. The pitching consistency stat I've made here seems to work pretty well at least for the Blue Jays pitchers that I've watched a lot this year. But, like any stat, it has its issues and could always be improved. First off, it would be nice to have it be a plus stat like OPS+, plus, so that it's easier to interpret. As it is right now, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense unless it's being compared to other pitchers that year. Making it a plus stat would immediately tell everyone how above or below league average consistency a pitcher is. So. Does the stat I've made make sense for the pitcher or pitchers I've shown for your team? Let me know what you think in the comments. And while you're at it, let me know what other improvements you think I could make to this stat. If you're interested in a particular pitcher's consistency that I don't have in this video, just ask in the comments and I'll find out for you. If you made it this far, thanks for watching and remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Jack of All Baseball, and I'll see you next time.